Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. The road to Houston is at one last pit stop. It is the NCR Division I semi-finals. And the first one of those coming to you live from Penn State is the St. Bonaventure Bonnies up against the Brown Bears. Thomas Grant in the commentary box alongside me, the contact coach Craig Wilson with your expert analysis. Craig, a very good morning to you, mate. Thank you. Wonderful to be here. Uh, what a game to be calling. Brown v St. Bonaventure, two standout teams within the league. Rightly got themselves to the semi-final. Only one can go on. It's an absolute pleasure to be calling this one with you, Thomas. Well, we saw the previous game between Virginia Tech and St. Joe's. Virginia Tech coming out on top in the D1 AA semi-final. 17 points to 15 in what was pretty treacherous conditions at times. Certainly a lot of downpour throughout that match and Antarctic temperatures. So it looks as if conditions have somewhat settled down a little bit for this one, which of course is great. For gameplay, hopefully we see a fast-flowing game. And let's talk a little bit about these two teams, Craig. Uh, St. Bonnie's, uh, a very, very strong side and a mix of international flavour throughout their lineup. No, absolutely, very strong sides, and as you said, they've got players from the US and from South Africa and from England, and they're coached by former Eagle Tui Osborne, a very, very good coach, knows his rugby inside out. So I'm really excited to see St. Bonaventure and their structure uh, come to life. Keep a particular eye on uh, Lorazato at number nine and Coyle at 10. They're going to be looking to pull the strings, particularly on a wet day, as you said, it's going to be important that the halfbacks control the game. So take a keep an eye out for those two, because I think we're going to have a big stain on how this match winds up. And for the Brown Bears, certainly has been a great season for them so far, led by coach Dave Laflamme, such an experienced head of that Brown University program. What's really been telling for the Bears this season is the power up front. The likes of Henri Gabriel, Joel Hasso and Dan Archer have really been a linchpin at scrum time for this Bears pack. Of course, they have a sprinkling of international flavour as well. Portuguese, English, even a bit of France as well. So both of these two teams are bringing lots of international experience and some real speed and pace out wide as well, which... It's certainly exciting for those watching at home. As you can see on the right of your screen, St. Bonaventure have entered the field and are huddled up and ready to go for this one. In just a moment, we should see the Brown Bears take the field. The road to Houston is well and truly alive. The winner of this fixture will head there next weekend, of course. We have one more Division I semi-final coming to you later. That'll be between Queens and Thomas Moore. What a doozy that one is predicted to be. But, of course, this one is just as important. And as we wait for the referee to get things underway as the Bears almost take the field, Craig, how do you expect these two teams to play each other today? What, what do you think the tactics will be from uh, both sides? Well, let's start off with Brown. They're going to go to their set piece. It's a huge part of their game. Keep a particular eye out on the scrum. They're going to look to dominate the scrum, win penalties wherever they are on the field, and that will allow them to kick to corners, which gets their line out more flying. It's been a weapon all year. I know St. Bonaventure are going to be analysing it, so it's about how do they limit those opportunities. With that being said, Bonnies can play rugby. They're a seriously good rugby team. They're going to be looking to really hit up strong in the midfield and create options either side okay so look for them a lot of return plays what we mean by that is the ball going one way and instantly coming back the other way that's a hallmark of St Bonaventure rugby so I'm excited to see how the Brown defence can deal with it and how both teams go in this game well we are moments away from this one getting underway semi-final action coming to you all the way from Reading and it'll be Raphael Lonsignor, the sophomore, to get proceedings underway for the Brown Bears going from left to right. The road to Houston is almost at a close and it's taken in immediately into contact by Mark Blum, the senior out of Lakewood, Ohio. And we have an early penalty to the Bonnies. It's a 
good opportunity for Bonnies early in the game. They received the kickoff. You always talk about get your exits right early in the game. They won the penalty. They've got a chance to clear their lines and set their attack up. And it will be Greg Stephens who will find touch early in this one, just finding the sideline past the halfway mark into the Brown Bears territory. The man out of Brooklyn, New York. And Reynard Boshoff out of South Africa will set for the first line out of the game. It's taken in by Blum, but it's been tapped on forward and now it's in the hands of Zeller for the Bears. We know what this man can do with ball in hand. Such a strong carrier wearing the 12 jersey today. Lewis gets it back to Lonsignor. Puts it to the boot and it is a fantastic touch finder early on in this one for Rafael Lonsignor. And as we've seen all season, Craig, that man is such a linchpin for them in the 10 jersey. Absolutely. His kicking out of hand is fantastic. And when you're kicking the ball, you're looking to either get it contestable or not land in the opposition's hands. And Brown really fancies their line out. So that's a big tactic from Brown right now. And they're going to try and put pressure on and try and win the second line out in succession. And Reynard Boshoff for his second line out. This one taken cleanly by Rick Rose. And cut out pass to Joseph Hawthorne. Lauren Zato just rallying his troops and Rick Rose again comes in for a carry. Looking to keep it nice and tight and really test out this Brown Bears defense so far. And of course, looks to have just been a scrum there. Yeah, but it will indeed be for St. Bonnie's. The ball deemed unplayable or taken into contact there. So they will get the return on the scrum. And, and this is certainly an encounter that really gets me excited is the battle up front here in the packs, Craig. Yeah, this is going to be a real big battle here. You've got Dan Archer, Al Hasso, and Gabriel Henrique, or Brown, going up against James Aitken, Reynard Boshoff, and Juan Penn. And this is going to be a real huge factor in this match. So let's take a look how this run goes. And we have a free kick at scrum time for St. Bonnie's. Just a, a little bit of early pre-engage there for the Bears. So it'll be that man in the 12 jersey, Greg Stephens, to clear it downfield. And Lonsignor goes back to clean up the scraps on the counter-attack. Throws the cutout pass to Max O'Donoghue, and it's been spilt forward. So it's in the hands of Lucas Sontaneru out of San Diego, California. Here's Joseph Hawthorne. Lorenzato, backdoor play from Penn. Out to his fullback, Taula, man out of Auckland, New Zealand. Good to see. It's taken in here by Greg Stephens. Lorenzato finds Blum. A pairing of carries so far in this match for Mark Blum. A little bit messy there for Bonnies, but the ball falls back for Lorenzato. But he's under all sorts of pressure from the Bears, and they get the penalty. What a statement there at the break time from the Brown Bears. Yeah, that was an excellent defensive set. You see the St. Bonaventure were looking to play out the back from both forwards pods, off nine and off ten. Brown read it well. They got the tackle deep into the St. Bonnie's um, half, and that put them under pressure. And if you notice from Brown, they're really targeting the ruck defensively, trying to put a lot of pressure on the St. Bonaventure's ruck there, and they got their rewards. And they certainly did, and Mikel Fine. Sorry, O'Donoghue with the kicking duties. Finds touch inside the 22, so a fantastic opportunity to see what Brown are going to bring at set-piece time in this semi-final. As the contact coach mentioned in pre-game, it's a real weapon for them. Brown. El Hasso feeds it into the scrum. It's messy ball at the back, but it's been taken in eventually by Brett Geis. Lewis. Off to Dan Archer, the captain. Met strongly in contact by the St. Bonnie's defenders. Lewis off to Lonsignor. Here's that dangerous Antonio Estevez. 
A mountain of tries to his name this season, and he's lost a forward. Simbonis, fantastic to get in there and just really pressurise the carry of Estevez and force the mistake. Yuan Penn and Taman Singh. Real statement by Simbonis there, Craig. Absolutely, and it was all about line speed. You saw they were ready. St. Bonaventure were on their toes. As soon as Brown got that ball out, they were launching up really fast. And you mentioned that man there, Taman Singh. He was putting in some big shots there. And sometimes all it is is line speed forces a skill set error, and they give themselves an opportunity to clear their lines. And it will be Matthew Lorenzato getting ready to. So we're just setting up for the scrum here. St. Bonaventure in the middle of the field. Last time was a free kick. So we're going to look to get this ball in and out. And there's the pressure on. It's deemed that Mars McIver has deemed that Brown have been pushing at a slightly wrong angle. That gives the opportunity, therefore, the penalty to St. Bonaventure. And they're going to clear their lines there. So St. Bonaventure are going to be really happy with that outcome. Referees, Miles is having a chat with Dan Archer just to get that right moving forward. But that's a really big weapon there for Brown, which has just been eliminated. And Bonnies will breathe a big sigh of relief whilst they clear their lines here. Which they managed to do. And they're going to find an attacking line out inside their 10 metre line. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do here. Do they continue to work up the field through passing or do they go to the kick early? That's when the line out first will be the message from the captain as they look to throw it in here. St. Bonaventure with a throw in, they go off the top. Good pressure from the line out defence from Brown there. And then a big tackle in midfield. But it looks like they've given away a penalty once again. So the penalties are starting to ramp up now for Brown. And there's a yellow card. So that's a big, big moment in the game. Uh, we've got a yellow card very early on. And it's going to be interesting to see if St. Bonaventure can clear their lines. And we'll just take a look back to see where that yellow card, when we get that information, who it was. But uh, St. Bonaventure now are into their attack and pattern. And for the first time, they're in Brown's half. So it's important that they keep the ball. And it's also just important that Brown keep their discipline because the referee has been on them from the last couple of plays. Here's St. Bonaventure with a throw in. Looks like they're going to the back. It's an overthrow. So Brown really scooped that up. And now they're into their attack and pattern. Best time to attack right now because the defense is disorganized. A nice quick ball, but a great tackle in the midfield, driving him backwards. And Brown are just resetting here. They're going to go to the boot. They're going to go long, which they do. This time it's fielded by St. Bonaventure. They move the ball into the infield. And they also go to the boot. This looks like it's going to stay in. It's going to be a contest in the air. Knocked over by his own player, but it looks like Brown have recovered the ball. And we're just going to play into their patterns now. There's Oli Corbett, number five from England. Big, strong ball carrier. Recycles that ball really well. And another big carry, but an excellent tackle from St. Bonaventure. They're winning the game line battle right now. And there's Lancia, who's having a little go, but he's met by three or four St. Bonaventure players. Good defence there in the midfield, but Brown do recycle the ball. There's Corbett once again with a big carry. And the St. Bonaventure competing at the ruck. They've got to be careful that they stay on their feet there. Now they're going for the counter ruck. They're putting a lot of pressure on there, so Brown have to slow this down. Lancia's in there from 10. Big carry from Dan Archer, the captain, just moving his team forward. And another little carry there by the Brown forwards just to set up a platform. Lontier is back onto his feet. He goes for a high kick into the midfield. Will Zeller's all over it. He looks for the tackle. He does get the tackle, but the offload is St. Bonaventure. And now they're in space. And St. Bonaventure are off. They're into the wider channels. This is what they're looking for. 
great run and a cover tackle there, a slight knock on, but a brilliant run there from Lorenzo Ballerini. And this game has started to open up now. Both teams can get a bit of a break, but it was a wonderful set of play there from both sides. We're just going to settle down for the scrum. We're looking over to the sideline. There must be something going on over there. The referees having a little chat. And it looks like Brown are going to make a substitution due to that yellow card in the front row. So it's been interesting to see what they do here. Yep, we're bringing on the replacement front row. And this will be an interesting scrum now because they have men down, the numbers down. And they're going to be setting up this scrum. And with the man down, it'd be interesting to see how Brown deal with this. What do you think there, Thomas? Well, certainly a man in the bin is not good. But we'll continue to play Lonson York. Decides to go for the boot option. It's at the back here for St. Bonnie's to launch a counter attack. A little bit of a commentary uh, disappearance. Apologies. Had a power cut, cut here in Boston, so not great. But we carry on. And Brown have the penalty. Yeah, the Brown defence did really well. It's been actually really strong. So, so Bonaventure is starting to find a few holds, particularly in those wider channels. But the covered defence for Brown was on point. And as we said earlier, they're targeting that ruck. They're really trying to slow the ball down or even better, get turnovers. So it really has become a battle of the breakdown, breakdown right now. And uh, both teams are getting an ascendancy there. So we're going to have to keep, keep working hard and be really clean on their attack. Well, Brown... Venture near on the 22 of St. Bonnie's. It'll be that man wearing number two, Joe El Hasso, to feed the ball into the line out. And he does just that. It's Steves looking for the front option. It's found Oliver Corbett at the back, but it's messy stuff. So St. Bonnie's with the ball through. Lauren Zato feeds it out to that number 12 Greg Stephens but it's been charged down by Junior Guffer not once but twice really putting pressure on the St Bonnie's kick there and eventually they find touch well, unlike Brown their, their lineup really isn't functioning and that's testament to St Bonaventure and their coach Terry Osborne doing their homework so it's definitely giving Brown food for thought because this has normally been their bread and butter the line out so we're going to have to get some action in. Ollie Corbett's going to have to start calling it to see if they can stop winning their own ball. Goes El Hasso. We're going to feed the ball in to the line out, and he does just that. Lewis, the scrum half, takes it down. Oliver Corbett forced to go in and play scrum half, and he dummy pumps and goes himself. Junior Guffer back to clean it up. The man wearing number 13 today. Plays football for the Brown Bears, and now he's been called into the rugby squad by Dave Laflamme. Exciting prospect, he says. El Hasso finds Lewis off to Lonsignor, who opts for the boot option again and finds a little bit of open grass just in front of the 22, letting it bounce fortuitously. Other Bonnies now trying to counter attack from deep inside their own half, and they do just that. Hot on attack here. Ah, St. Bonnie's. Lucas Otaniru, the man out of San Diego, takes it into contact. Here goes Joseph Hawthorne. Lauren Zato just settling it down and setting up for the box kick here. Try and relieve a bit of pressure that's being applied by this Bears defense. And he makes contact as Lorenzato taken down by O'Donoghue, who opts for a bit of a funky old kick and finds a bit of grass. But at the back here from Manu Tuala. Breaks one almost. Counter attack coming in from the Bears. And they almost do a good job to steal the ball, but just don't get quite a clean go at it. Here goes Tola. Digging in for the ball at scrum how Finds his prop. Lovely tip pass. Off. Here are the Bonnies making some real pasture through Taman Singh. 
the big lock. Otsuneru, pick and go. Really making metres on this Brown Bears defence. Lauren Zato finds Joseph Hawthorne. Strong carry by this man so far in the game. Lauren Zato finds Steffens. Tola goes for the grubber kick through, but Rafael Lonsenua is there to clean it up, and he puts in his famous trademark sidestep, but they get the kick away, and it's a little bit nothingness, so St. Bonnie's on the counter-attack here. Through Greg Steffens, the big number 12. Junior out of Brooklyn, New York. And here's the hot stepper, Lorenzo Villiani, out of Italy. And Brown need to be careful not to concede a penalty here, and they've done a great job of turning it over. Although I think St. Bonnie's have returned the favour and got it back themselves. Here's Mark Blum. Just looking to settle down a little bit is Matteo Lorenzato. He finds Steffens again. Flat pass off to Juan Penn and he finds some space. There's the big prop. Juan Penn still going. Keelan Croyle finds his 13. Lucas Otaneru still going. Getting very close there are ah, some Bonaventure. Aitken, head down. Driving legs. You can see the try line on screen. St. Bonaventure knocking on the door of the Bears. Meters away. Rose. Joseph Hawthorne at the base now. Hawthorne. Almost over. Just meters away here from the first points in this game are St. Bonaventure. Here goes Lauren Zato. Finds Stephens. Short pass off to Lorenzo Villani, but the Bears have done a good job of holding him up. And in turn, they've stolen the ball back. It's messy stuff, a little bit of pinball activity, but the Bears have got out of jail here, and Estevez has come up with the ball somehow, but a penalty to St. Bonaventure. And Craig, catch my breath a bit. That was a long, long phase of play. Wow, that was in play for close to five minutes there, which is nearly unheard of in rugby. That is an extremely long time and it had everything, but you started to see St. Bonaventure would get into their rhythm. They looked really dangerous as they moved that ball into the wider channels. Brown were dealing with it, but that pressure does, does tell, particularly in defence, all it takes is one missed tackle and really was starting, and St. Bonnie's were really starting to turn the pressure on. But Brown did get the ball back. But then there was a penalty, and it's going to be an interesting call what we're going to do here. They're going to go for the points, but wow, Bonnies were really starting to get into their play there. Well, they're going to go for the points, and uh, I've just been informed that it is actually Keelan Coyle that's wearing number 12. So thank you to whoever that was in the comments. We, of course, the team sheet read otherwise, so Keelan Coyle is wearing number 12 and Steffens is in number 10 today for St Bonaventure so Coyle will take up kicking duties and will look to get first points on the board here for the St Bonaventure team these points are so so critical when it comes to finals rugby 20 minutes gone in the match the road to Houston and Coyle drills it hard straight and through the middle the flags go up 3-0, St. Bonaventure over the Brown Bears. Just under 20 minutes gone in this encounter. And Craig, your initial thoughts on the opening 20 so far? Well, it's been tight. Most of the game has been played inside the middle of the field. But coaches always talk about scoring points. Entries into the 22 always come away with points. St. Bonaventure entered the 22 once. They got their points. So they ticked that job right there. Monsignor gets play back underway and it's taken in by Joseph Hawthorne, the number seven for St. Bonaventure. Lauren Zato finds Juan Penn, the man out of Cleveland, Ohio. Grad student. Lauren Zato shapes for the box kick, connects relatively well and will find touch just past the 10 meter mark of the Bears it's taken in here 
by Campbell O'Connor. Lewis back to Lonsignor again persisting with the boot and it's found Twala at the back. Can't take it cleanly on the first bite but gets it on the second. Charge down Ollie Corbett. The big lock racing after it. Corbett for the Bears. Wow. Ollie Corbett. They're going to have a little chat about this. A potential penalty try. Maybe on the cards. But it came from nothing. Manu Twala at the back. Couldn't take it cleanly and forced himself under pressure. And Ollie Corbett was there. Johnny on the spot. But it will be a scrum. Craig Wilson dissect that one. Well, it was a great kick initially because it was right on the side of the touchline. Twala didn't quite field it, but it's all about the kick. It's an old saying, the kick is only as good as its chase. Oli Corbett was wonderful in his chase. And actually, St. Bonaventure have been charged down twice now. So that might start to get into their head and give Brown a real opportunity to keep chasing hard because they might get the reward. Well, set-piece opportunity here for Bears is massive and they... Itch forward through Estevez. Lewis gets it off to Lonsignor. Short ball play to Junior Guffer. A mountain of a man. Here goes Estevez. Another one of those. Strong fend. Look at that. Itching towards the five metre mark of St. Bonaventure. The Bears looking to counter punch. That three points taken early on in this game. Lewis gets it off to Dan Archer. The captain always carries with such vigour. And a penalty to the Bears. Not releasing is the call. The penalty on number eight, Reed Harmon. From St. Bonaventure. And the Bears, no surprises, will look to try and draw this one up. Points critical in these games, really, aren't they? Taking the most of your opportunities, Craig. Absolutely. If the points run off, particularly at this stage in the game, uh, you just keep that scoreboard ticking over. And you saw from Brown's play there, it's probably a facet because they were in the 22, but they like to keep things tight. St. Bonaventure are liking to play into the wider channels a little bit more. So we've got a really interesting game developing here as Monsieur kicks it over for the three points. But you see a two different styles here. It'll be interesting to see which one prevails as fatigue starts to set in. Well, it is three apiece. Brown and St. Bonnie's. 22 just over gone in this semi-final division one of course we have the other division one semi-final coming at you later this evening between queens and thomas moore the winner of both of those heading to houston next weekend and it will be stephens to get us back underway taken in by o'donoghue who feeds Estev is there into contact. Lewis finds Oliver Corbett, the man that constructed that penalty before with the charge down. And St. Bonnie's have almost got in and turned it over, but Archer's hot on the ball. Lewis finds Casper Pitbaldo, puts Oli Corbett down the sideline. Here he goes again. Just getting wrapped up in contact there by Manu Twala, but only Corbett. And the penalty is given. He's made a couple of big really plays dangerous. in the last five minutes. Absolutely, yes, Thomas. He's looking really dangerous, particularly Oli Corbett. He forced that initial turnover with the kick, and now with ball in hand, he's been carrying hard. So excellent job. But what I've noticed from St. Bonaventure, watch how their first tackler is tackling low. And that allows the tackler assist to go in and jackal the ball. So a real technique, really well worked on, refined by St. Bonaventure, and also a tactic. So just watch for those low tackles, and that's why they're given an opportunity to slow the ball, uh, brown ball down and get those turnovers. Well, St. Bonnies have the line out here. Another opportunity inside the Bears. Ah, from set piece, and it will be Reynard Boschoff to feed it in again, and the referee just wants time off for a bit of a chat, but potentially some substitutions maybe. But time is back on, and Boschoff gets ready to feed it into the line out. Well, it looks as if we have a, a wounded Ollie Corbett making his way back into the line out fold. And underway we go. 
Bosch off. Feeds it into Taman Singh and it's messy but collected in turn by Joseph Hawthorne. Lauren Zato finds Reed Hammond. Gets it off to Steffens. Backdoor play here to Coyle. Coyle with the ball throws the wide pass and it's not quite accurate but Villani collects the scraps. Hot step 1-2. Eventually taken down. Lauren Zato finds Steffens. Backdoor play to Otaneru. Almost slices through the gap. Or rather, it was Coyle. Lauren Zato. Otaneru now with the ball. Finds Rick Rose down the outside here is Karen Cross. Here for James Aitken, the junior out of Doncaster in England. Some Bonnie's looking pretty well organised, but the Bears have come in and turned it over. Dylan Lewis finds Lonsonier at the back, who goes for the exit and does a decent job of it as Manu Taula can't quite collect it cleanly again. And he launches the counter attack, and it's messy here. It's been turned over by the Bears, and Junior Guffer pounces on the ball. Lewis off to Pit Baldo. Goes himself, Casper Pipboldo. A little bit of room for him to move. Lewis, Lonsignor, finds Brett Geis. Another one of the tall locks in this Brown Bears side. Lonsignor, Estevez, the powerhouse. Gets contained pretty nicely by the St. Bonnie's defence. Lonsignor, Pipboldo again, the man that made... A short break moments ago. Gets held up in contact by some Bonnies. Lewis. Lonsignor. Off to Archer. Head down. Strong contact carrier is Dan Archer, the captain. Here goes Lonsignor now. Short pass off to Gabriel. Pipaldo on the outside for Max O'Donoghue. Looking to play with some real tempo here are the Bears. Into their structure. Lewis. Off to Archer, beats one, beats two, still going Dan Archer. Lewis finds Dyer. Simponi's just clinging on here. He goes Dyer again, plays receiver off to William Zeller, the man out of Rentham, Massachusetts. Finds Lonsignor. Backdoor play here for O'Donoghue. Here goes Archer, off to Pitboldo. Relentless attack at the moment. Bonnie's doing a great job to hold on. Archer. Lewis just slowing things down a little bit, looking for his runners. And here they arrive in the form of Antonio Estevez. Almost securing a turnover. Where's some Bonnie's, but Brown secure of the ruck. Lonsignor through to Corbett. An open pasture. Look at him go. Ollie Corbett looks for the offload. Gets it away. And they are in. The Brown Bears are going to have a little chat. Oh, the referee team, but it looks as if Campbell O'Connor has scored in this one. We will get confirmation. And number 11, Campbell O'Connor, still awaiting to see the try be given 100% confirmation. The man out of Chicago, Illinois. We're just waiting to see if the try was awarded. Here's the replay here. Craig Wilson, Ollie Corbett again. Fantastic offload away to O'Connor in the corner. That man's making a huge impact so far. Look at Coach Laflamme, isn't he happy? Absolutely. He looked like Coach Laflamme was playing out there. He was right alongside that play. But again, it was a feature of keeping the ball for a very long period of time. When St. Bonaventure got their three points, they kept the ball and Brown did exactly the same. That was a total rugby try. It had good shape, it had good kicking, it had good defense. It was, they turned the ball over. It was just a brilliant play. I and mean, eventually, with, as the hands worked themselves away to the right-hand side, that man, Ollie Corbett, sucked in that last player. He managed to get the offload into Campbell O'Connor. And it was just a brilliant, brilliant try from Brown. Coaches are going to be happy. The team's going to be happy. But it's just really well worked. Raphael Lonsignor will look to add 
And the two points on top of the O'Connor score. He strikes it pretty well. And the radar just to the left. So eight points to three. The Bears over St. Bonnie's. You can see on screen just over 10 minutes to play in the first half. And there were bodies all over the place, really, when O'Connor got the ball down. There was injured players and back play. There were trainers on the field. But in the end, the try stands and... Brown take the upper hand in the semi-final. Yeah, it's a tight one right now. So 8-3, the game is finally balanced. And both teams have really shown what they're about. Brown, you'll notice they're playing. They're not putting many passes together on each phase play. Usually just one or two. It's either off nine, Dylan Lewis, to a heavy runner, or off uh, Raphael Lonsier at 10 for a heavy runner. So that's Brown's DNA. They look to try and find holes and then move the ball wide. The St. Bonaventure are trying to get it wider a little bit quicker. So a real great battle going on here. St. Bonnie's get us back underway and... McAlpine, the number seven, takes it into contact for the Bears. He's been a standout for them all season, the kid out of London, England. Lonsignor, again, goes for the torpedo bomb option, and he's connected nicely, and it bounces here at the back for Lorenzo Villani, who pops the pass off to Keelan Coyle. Breaks through one tackle and gets the bounce pass away to Lucas Otaneru. Messy ball at the breakdown, and the Bears might have turned this one over. But they just do enough. Lorenzato gets it off to Juan Penn. And here now for Hawthorne. A number of carries for him so far. Pops it off to his opposite prop, James Aitken. Just wanting to slow tempo down as... Lauren Zato, and they get the penalty, which will certainly help that, Craig Wilson. Absolutely. That was a brilliant way to get themselves back into the game. I'm just really impressed by both teams. The fierceness at the ruck is intense. It's a really high level, and you find that when you play against better, when you're seeing better teams and better players, their discipline at the ruck is really well. And I just think that's going to have a massive determination on how this battle goes. The St. Bonaventure kept the ball well there, but you saw they were trying to offload. They're trying to move the point of attack, and that just keeps the Brown defence guessing. They uh, they go, they give away the rock penalty, and it gives them a chance to put three points over and bring it into a really tight game. Well, it will be Keelan Coyle to line up for the shot at goal. The man out of Derry in Ireland. And I think he was trying to pinch a little bit of extra metres on the referee, but the referee spotted it pretty well and said, take that back a couple of steps, thank you very much. And again, Coyle is now wearing the 12 jersey. He was listed as 10, so he will take up the kicking duties today for some Bonaventure. Already won three point to his name. He goes the strike. Pretty good. And even better, the flags go up. Eight points to six. Your NCR men's Division I semi-final is tightly contested. 34 minutes gone. Six to play in the first half. Greg Wilson, uh, very important six minutes coming up before they head into the sheds. Absolutely, and it all starts with this restart. You, if you score points, you want to exit well, and Brown want to get that ball back. So it all starts right now because this is going to be a tight battle throughout. Matteo Lorenzato shapes up for the box kick again. They've been pretty persistent with that tactic, and he strikes this one pretty cleanly. It's taken in here by Campbell O'Connor, the man wearing number 11 today for the Bears. We carry there by O'Connor. Sets it back for Lewis, who finds Lonsignor and again goes for the up and under. Zeller and McAlpine chasing after it, and McAlpine gets a boot to it. Number 22, Cy Menendo hole back here for St. Bonaventure. Lorenzato makes a lovely break, but a penalty was conceded. Side entry is the call by the referee, and Call me a little bit 
I was surprised there did the St. Bonnie's break, but the Brown get the penalty in turn. Yeah, Brown's scrambling defence has been excellent. St. Bonaventure are really making a few yards there, but they're not being able to finish off because Brown is scrambling back really well. And that turnover there came from Dylan Lewis, number nine. He's not the biggest. Because he was a threat, that means the St. Bonaventure had to take shortcuts to try and clear out that ruck. Hence the side entry call. So although the penalty won't go awarded to Dylan Lewis for the jackal, but he got that for his team. So it's really great to see the smaller guys getting stuck in as well, particularly in the semi-final. That's exactly what is needed. Well, the Bears are looking to extend this lead before half-time. As you can see, time winding down on screen. Corbett takes in the line-out. Short play back inside to Archer. Down the right-hand touchline. Using the space well as here goes Corbett again for another carry. Sets it off to Lewis. Lonsignor. Dyer. Backdoor play to Junior Guffer. Wide cutout pass and it is just not on the money on that occasion. So St. Bonnie's will get the line out back. Just accuracy lacking that time, Craig. Absolutely, it was accuracy, and particularly from Junior Gaffer there, he's come from football, so maybe that tackle and the catching pass under tackle pressure put him off a little bit, but great line speed from St. Bonaventure, they kept connected, they're really, really sticking to their line speed, and they got the reward, they got the turnover. St. Bonnie's take it in through Taman Singh, here goes Lorenzato, spots a wee gap with the dummy pump. Lorenzato. Plays it back for Keelan Coyle. At the back here for Lonsignor. Here he is, the dancey right foot step. And bursts through one tackle. And his body's lying all over it for St. Bonaventure. So Brown get the penalty again. Just a bit of ill discipline letting them down at the moment. So Brown will have another opportunity to try and extend their lead on the stroke of half time and they'll go for the points and that time it was Lonsoner who we used to kick in he did a run there he's a very dangerous runner he was moving he was moving the defensive player he got the go forward which was really important for the attacker as a defense the defender made a cover tackle he couldn't roll away hence the penalty so really well worked by brown and particularly from that man on screen right now Rafael Lonsignor sets up for the shot at goal. He's had a pretty good kicking percentage rate this year for Brown. I couldn't tell you what that is exactly, but watching a lot of their games, he certainly knows how to get the ball through the uprights as he sets up the man out of France. Here goes Lonsignor. Pretty clean strike. How's the accuracy? Just as good. 11 points to 6. It is a 5-point buffer for the Brown Bears over St. Bonaventure. Your NCR Division 1 semi-final action. Coming to you live here from Penn State. It is 11 points to 5 to the Bears, or 11-6 rather, I should say. The scoreboard reading wrong there. Here's Estevez. Gets it back for Lewis, who finds Henrique Gabriel, the man out of Setubal, Portugal. Just looking to settle it down and shape for the box kick here is Lewis. Instead finds it back to Lonsignor who sends it high into the Penn State sky for Tola who collects this one cleanly. Finds Otaneru. Beats one does Otaneru. Still going into the 22 here. A St. Bonaventure not done yet in this first half. He goes Rose. Lorenzato, backdoor play here for Taula, and he just spills it forward, so a little bit of handling costing St. Bonaventure on that occasion, and that'll be all we have time for in the first half here. 
It is a tight, tense and furious encounter. Craig Wilson, your initial reaction to that first half? It's exactly as you said it. That is a tight one. Two really good teams going at it. Right now, Brown does have the edge. They look like they're advancing the ball forward with composure, but their defence. And that last play there was all about line speed. They've done their homework. They noticed early in the game that St Bonaventure were going wide and they've got their line speed, they've got their turnover. So it's something St Bonaventure are going to have to address. But right now, it looks like Brown have the edge. They certainly do. 11 points to six. It is time to debrief that first half. And we'll be joining you in just a moment's time for the second half action. The road to Houston is alive and Brown have punched their name on the ticket so far. We'll be back very soon. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. We are the crouch, we are the bind, we are the set, we are the squeeze, we are the hit. We are Rhino, home of the scrum.
in our game. We play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, to Next Level Rugby's coverage of the NCR Division I semi-finals. We've already seen one fixture take place here at Penn State. It was Virginia Tech up against the St. Joseph's Hawks, and Virginia Tech came out on top 17 points to 15. But on this occasion, we have the Brown Bears up against the St. Bonaventure Bonnies. Thomas Grant with Craig Wilson alongside me in the commentary box. What a tight, tense first half we saw there, Craig. Uh, if you were in both camps coaching these teams, what were the messages you'd be delivering to these sides? If I was Brown, exactly the same. Territory, keep it tight, trust your set piece. Uh, set piece. St. Bonaventure, I would look to be a little bit more direct early in the phase count, and then they can find a few more holes out wide. So that's what I'd be looking to do. Well, we are back underway, and Cameron McAlpine carries it in. Second half, coming to you live here. 11 points to six. The Bears just winning the arm wrestle at the moment. As Lewis gets ready to shape up for the box kick, or rather back to Lonsignor like he's done so much this season, and Lonsignor puts it up high into the sky. His Tola. Collects it and feeds it off to Keelan Coyle, the senior out of Darien Island. Lovely kick there at the back, and Dyer has to go back and return. It's a little bit of a wobbly old one, so on the counter-attack here are some bonnies, although it's been knocked on. A little bit of a bobble there for Dyer, and the referee spotted it. I certainly didn't, so some bonnies. What an opportunity early on here, Craig. Absolutely, this is a big opportunity. So good pressure, a real good kick there to get some territory, force a mistake. The ball is a little bit wet, it's slippery out there. So this is a really big scrum that St. Bonaventure have to capitalize on. They've been in the 22 once and they managed to get three points from it. They've now entered the 22 once again and you're always looking for points every time you're in this area of the field. Well, I thought it had bounced off his knees, but he obviously got a hand to it and the brown scrum powers in though and Look to have turned this over, and they have indeed. Estevez off the back with the ball. Try and update you if coach, coaches of both sides have made any changes, but Wonsignor tries to find touch and doesn't, but here goes Minenhull, the man out of Dallas, Texas. Lovely left to right step and almost pierces through the gap. Knock on advantage here for the Bears. Sy Mendenhall just losing it forward. Here goes Gabriel. Lewis back to Lonsignor. Gets hit pretty late, but play on is the call. Sendenhall rips it off to Tola. Backdoor play here for Coyle. Finds Lorenzo Villani on the outside who has been tough to bring down today. The nippy number 14. Here goes Lorenzado down the left side. Spots a gap. Still going Lorenzado, the little nine. Itching towards the Bears' try line. And it's been lost forward. What a heads up play there by Matteo Lorenzato. The winger, uh, the little scrum half of St. Bonaventure. Fantastic stuff.
really great awareness from him. Brown uh, put in numbers into that ruck. So as you put more numbers in, you leave yourself a little bit vulnerable around the edges. And that's where Lorenzado, he saw that there wasn't a lot of room to work with, but he made that gap just on that far side there, worked himself back into midfield, and they managed to retain the ball and get the scrum. But it's not always an easy task, because as we just saw, Brown's scrum came up clutch in a really big moment just a couple of minutes ago. So St. Bonaventure are going to have to get themselves really tighter at the pack and almost look at it like a seven scrum. Get the ball in and get it out as quickly as possible so you can stop the Brown threat. Well, no doubt that will be the instructions to Matteo Lorenzato, who got them in this position. Just over five metres out from the Brown Bears try line and the ball comes at the back here for Lorenzato. And they get a penalty. Front row just wheeling around the scrum was the call from the referee. So St Bonaventure direct the penalty towards the posts and will try and tighten up the scoreline here and definitely the right thing to do, isn't it, Craig? Yeah, take the points, particularly how he's been kicking all day. Take those points if we're on offer, bring it back to as close as possible. So that'll be 11 9 if, if it goes over. But you don't want to be contesting against the Brown scrum and line out too often. So I think this is a wise call from the St. Bonaventure men. Well, this will reduce the deficit to two points. And Keelan Coyle will look to hit his third of the day course all of their points coming from the boot so far Penn State Barracks you can see the American flag waving in the background and we might just see the assistant referees flags wave on this occasion too and here he goes Coyle strikes it cleanly direction just as good 11 points to 9 we have a game on our hands ladies and gentlemen here at Penn State St Bonaventure knocking on the door of the Bears. Your Division 1 semi-final action live here on Next Level Rugby. A massive day of action. Two more games to come after this. Strap yourselves in as Rafael Lonsignor gets playback underway and Estevez climbs to the night sky and taps the ball back for the Bears. Lewis gets it off here to El Hasso. Penalty to St Bonaventure. Holding on is the call. Just got isolated there to Joe El Hasso, but Brown certainly. What a great kick chase there, Craig, to tap that ball back. Yeah, you tend to see that on the seven series. It's a contestable kick. Got up, got the ball back. A testament to St Bonaventure, they've been brilliant at the defensive ruck all day. They managed to get themselves over the ball, causing a lot of pressure. And that man, Juan Penn, he got the ball back for his team, gives them a chance to clear their lines and set the attack up on their own. Uh, St Bonaventure find the mark, bang on the halfway line. So they will look to launch deep into the Brown Bears half. Bosch off from South Africa, feeds it in. It's taken in there by Rick Rose, who finds Lorenzato, the little scrum half. He's had some nice touches today already. Here goes Penn with the pick and go. Shrugs off McAlpine. And drives the legs hard forward over the halfway metre line. Some Bonaventure just trying to keep this tight but Brown coming in and disrupting the tactics Lorenzato decides to put it to the sky Zella comes down with it Lewis gets it off to Estevez who releases the ball and gets up and goes again and beats the tackle of James Aitken from St Bonnie's And Estevez is pleading that he can't place the ball there. And Brown get the penalty. Well, 
And the referee's just going to have a little bit of a word here to Greg Steffens about the discipline of the St Bonaventure team. So it will be O'Donoghue to find touch. And it's a little bit of a, a wonky old kick, but he does the job and it gets past the halfway metre line. So Brown. Good set-piece opportunity here, Craig, for the Bears. Yeah, exactly what we'll be after. Fiercely contesting this rock right now. Uh, St Bonaventure did try and play a little bit tighter. Brown matched them. And they got the turnover, and they're going to be launching their own attack from here. El Hasso gets it off to McAlpine, who sets it at the back for Oliver Corr, but he had a great first 40 minutes, and he gets driven in a hard tackle. Lewis off to Lonsignor. McAlpine again, almost breaking through the gap, but contained nicely. Lewis, Lonsignor spots some space to puts the grubber through, and it's collected here by Lauren Zato for some Bonaventure. The back here for Mendenhall. Gets collected nicely in the tackle, and Junior Guffer goes into disrupt proceedings. Lorenzato held up here by Archer, and a bit of a WWE wrestling move as such. It's at the back here for Coyle. Goes into play scrum half and finds strong carry there in the form of Aitken. And a penalty to Brown. They tap and go quickly. Here's Estevez looking to play with some real tempo. Not 10 is the call, so they get another one. And good heads up play there from Brown. Winning the penalty. Estevez spotted that they weren't 10, so they win again, Craig. Yeah, so what you are seeing that St. Bonaventure are playing the game a little bit tighter now, but their support's just been a little bit off, and that's allowed Brown to put maximum pressure at the breakdown and force the turnover. And Estevez there, just a really good bit of smarts. He knew that St. Bonaventure were not back 10, so he tapped and goed. If he gets touched, even in the slightest, he's going to get himself an extra 10 yards. That allows it to be an easier kick. Well, the kick looks to have drifted dead and not found touch so we will come back for a scrum where it was kicked from so it's a huge mistake there from the Bears just crossed the plane of touch outside the flag so St Bonaventure get the ball gifted back and would that be a costly mistake there for the Bears time will tell Lorenzato gets ready to set it in for another scrummer. Powerful pack battle we have today, and Brown certainly winning the upper hand. Look at this scrum from the Bears. Dominating. Lewis gets in for the tackle on Lorenzato. Penn plays scrum half and does a good job. Gets it off to Coyle, who beats one tackle, gets the offload away to Mendenhall. Puts the grubber through and Lonsignor's there to clean it up. Beats one, Lonsignor. Almost two. Rantic Rugby Union at the moment, and Simp Bonaventure turns it over. Here's Penn. Gets it away to number 17, Zesty McGlory. What a name that is. Lorenzato gets it off to Stephens, to Coyle. What a powerful runner this man is. Beats one, two. Still going, Coyle. Brown do a good job to disrupt it, but Lauren Zato's there to collect the scraps. Boyle looking for the pick and go, but pops it off to his opposite in the form of Mark Blum, the number six today for St Bonaventure. Here goes Hawthorne, steaming onto it. What a line. Lauren Zato finds Steffens. Nothing on, so he takes it into contact himself. In the hands here of Oteneru. Beats one, and the hooker here of Boshoff. Boshoff to Mendenhall. Down the right-hand touchline. Beats one, Mendenhall. Gets the pop away to Juan Penn. Pass the 22 of St. Bonaventure. Threatening the Brown Bears defense. 
Lorenzato snipes. Gets it away to McGlory, but it's been knocked on. Well, backwards was the call, so play on. That time. Certainly see one, but... Some Bonaventure maybe just playing a bit too fast for themselves there, Craig. What's your thoughts? I've been really impressed with Simon Mendenhall. He's really looked dangerous with ball in hand. He's created that opportunity there to give St. Bonaventure a really good attacking platform. But I think the St. Bonaventure's mistakes are starting to come because there's so much pressure from Brown at the defensive ruck and it's just not allowing them clean ball. So if they can clean that up and get the really quick ball up on the front foot, they've got a real chance because they get his work in but it's just the execution, but that's credit to the pressure what Brown are putting on, particularly in their defensive ranks. Well, both of these teams putting on a really entertaining battle today, and there's still plenty more to come. 25 minutes, we're just over. The road to Houston at its final stop. Brown, currently with their name on the itinerary, 11 points to nine. St Bonaventure certainly are not going away dying and really threatening this Brown team. And we'll have a scrum pack down for a reset. Both front rows going to ground. Really impressed, Craig, with the skill set of some of these, particularly front rowers for St Bonaventure, Juan Penn and, and Aitken. Just the ability to get these offloads away and put their loose forwards and backs into space. Yeah, the modern rugby player, it's not all about just running hard now. You've got to be able to pass, catch, tackle, ruck, turn out, turn over, everything. Okay, so the modern front rower is a really great athlete. And as you said, the St Bonaventure men definitely are. Well, have a look at this. The Brown scrum completely dominant and win the penalty. Such a weapon for them. You can see them getting pats on the back there from Pit Baldo. Gabriel, El Hasso and Archer all going to work together. And that is a, a massive reliever there for the Bears and Dyer. Finds touch on the halfway metre mark, so the Bears counter attacking St Bonaventure's threatening running. You can see some of the fans there in the stand here at Penn State Burks. Getting a great watch of Rugby Union here is Joel Hasso. Gets it off to Cameron McAlpine, the man out of England who takes it into contact eventually. Popping the ball off. Lewis off to Lonsignor. Cross field kick. A little bit of space for Zeller. He could have been impeded, but no, says the referee. So we play on. Coyle tried to get the pass away, but it's messy stuff. And Junior Guffer comes up off the ball. Frantic rugby at the moment, Craig Wilson. Absolutely. It's it's very tight out there. Brown trying to move that ball. It was a beautiful kick from Montier just to land it just behind that defence to cause a little bit of chaos. Simon Mendenhall did clear it up for St Bonaventure, but that covering tackle from Brown all day, their defence has been brilliant. If there's even been a sniff of a line break, and right now that's making sure they're just asserting their ascendancy. And let's give a shout out to the Brown pack so far. Particularly in this second half, their scrums have been absolutely dominant. And this is really threatening right now for St Bonaventure, even though it's their ball. Well, they're certainly looking to repeat the dose on this occasion. As Lauren Zart. Certainly he can see the dominance there of the pack. Lorenzato gets the ball away, but there's a penalty here for St Bonaventure. Lewis just in an offside position there, so that'll relieve a little bit of pressure. Coyle sends it into touch around about the halfway metre mark. And Reynard Boshoff gets ready to feed it into the line out. 
Just over 20 minutes to play in this NCR D1 semi-final. Some Bonnies come up with the ball. Lauren Zato off to Blum. Bit of space if they can work it here for Coyle. Lorenzato demands the ball and he doesn't get it. The penalty comes in their March 10 Brown for chatting back to the referee. So this puts them in a potential position for points. Maybe just out of the range of Coyle, but he's certainly thinking about it. And they're going to do it indeed. Discipline really letting Brown down there, Craig. Yeah, never talk back to a referee. Rule number one, you learn that at the youngest age, you start to play rugby. And Antonio Estevez there, he does get a little bit into the game. He's a brilliant player, but he'll his coach will be not happy with him there. And actually, my mind now goes back to the 50th minute when Brown had their opportunity to get an extra three points, but they went for touch and they ended up missing touch. I'm just wondering how costly that could be particularly if Coyle slots this over and he's been looking sharp all day so there's every chance this is going to go between the sticks oh, Sim Bonaventure the opportunity to take the lead in this game by oh, the slimmest of margins but it is a tight tense encounter in all points There's certainly gold in this one it will be Keelan Coyle the senior to try and make that happen here he goes. Strikes it pretty decently. How's the radar? Not on on that occasion, so the Bears breathe a sigh of relief there and a 22 metre will happen through the boot of Lonsignor. Lonsignor gets it back underway and Coyle, the goal kicker, takes it in himself, beats one. Still going Coyle, such a big unit to bring to ground. Brown pleading for the penalty and they get it. Fantastic stuff and I think it's the number one, Henrik Gabriel, who comes up with the turnover for holding on. Oh, they're so good around the breakdown, other bears, and just goes to show why they're Craig. Yeah, Henrik Gabriel here. Brilliant technique for a big man. It's just when that attacker gets isolated, and that's one thing that's happening with St. Bonaventure a little bit now. Their attackers are getting isolated, particularly with his brown team, defensively really, really good around the ruck. And Enrique Gabriel got himself low, won the ball, got his reward, and got the turnover for his team. Well, we're into the final quarter of the semi-final. A trip to Houston on the line. El Hasso. Gets it in, finds Estevez. It's a messy ball, but it's been collected and lost forward, though. I thought as if St. Bonaventure had competed the f uh, conceded the first knock on, but it was Brown rather, so Bonnies will get the ball back. And really, these teams are just trading position at the moment. Here goes Lorenzato. Feeds it into the scrum, but it's strong from Brown, but the ball's there. But the referee wants to see that one played out again, so we'll pack down for a reset. Again, it's pretty obvious, Craig, that Brown are the more dominant scrum, but they've obviously got to make sure that they're, they're staying square and straight. Absolutely. Always got to stick to the laws as much as you can. Um, and sometimes that dominance can put a... It makes it look a bit odder than it actually should look if they're really dominant. So they've got to stay tight, just drive straight, and they're going to get their rewards. St. Bonaventure just want this ball in and out, and they want to be gone. Well, they get just what they wanted. Lorenzato gets it off to Coyle. Short pass, pop away to Otaneru, but it's been knocked on. And again... Quite a few unforced errors in the past 15 or so minutes, just letting both teams down and certainly entering into those nervy territory. No doubt the sideline and the, the management staff of both sides have got the heart rate pumping at an all-time high, but 
I'm sure the players are certainly nervous as well. As hours of training all comes down to these last 16 or so minutes. Lewis gets it into the scrum. Now it's with a Stevers at the back. Pops it back off to Lewis. Lonsignor feeds it through and that kick has gone out on the full. So it will come back for a line out in line with where Lonsignor kicked it. So Bonaventure get the ball back. Game is a bit of a the second half, particularly as a front row delight. There's a lot of set piece, a lot of stoppages in play, and it's all about which team can now wrestle some momentum and go forward. Oh, absolutely! And Brown come up with this one with a messy line out from St. Bonnie. So McAlpine takes it into contact straight on the ball with St. Bonaventure, but not cleanly says the ref. So we play on Corbett, flat pass, almost. Cleaned up by St. Bonaventure. Lewis plays Lonsignor. Off to Estevez. Met strongly in a tackle there by Zesty McGlory. Lonsignor goes for the long up and under. Finds Mendenhall. He's had such an impact off the bench today for Bonnies. Taula. It's here now for Villani playing scrum half and Feeds it off to Joseph Hawthorne. Lorenzato wrapped up by Corbett, but will come back for a penalty, says the referee. And just beyond halfway, some Bonaventure will be looking to send this deep into Brown's half. Craig Wilson, put yourself in the camp of, of Brown Bears. What would you be saying to your pack right now, to your team? You've just got to get exactly what we've been doing. Just really make sure you're disciplined. That's the big thing which is going to win the game. Actually, for both teams, because the game is so finely balanced, it's just discipline. For Brown, it's all about playing territory, turning St. Bonaventure around. For St. Bonaventure, just when they get the ball, just get a bit more numbers around the attack and ruck, and that's going to give the game a bit more flow. Bosch off. Gets it into the line out for St. Bonnies, and they've done a nice enough job of making sure it stays in their possession, and they get the penalty. Not rolling away is the call against Brown, so... Again, St. Bonaventure will have the opportunity to itch even closer into Brown territory, but they're opting for the points, I believe, and that is indeed what they're doing. So another opportunity here for Keelan Coyle to try and get the lead in favour of St. Bonnie's. Three penalties now from Brown. One talking back to a referee, and then two now at the ruck. And that's just giving St. Bonaventure's an opportunity to go for post. And this is actually a pretty good decision because the set piece for St. Bonaventure is a little difficult right now. But even if they miss, obviously he doesn't want to miss. Even if they miss, it's going to be a 22 meter dropout. They will get the ball back and they can attack again. So I think this is a great call. Here goes Coyle. Gets ready. Oh, no doubt some nerves going through this man's body right now. Coyle. Shanks that one to the right, so the score remains. 11 points to 9. Just didn't quite connect with that one how he wanted to, so another 22 dropout. Of course, that just itches time down on the clock. The Bears... With the 22 through Lonsignor. It's for a deep high kick and it's taken down by Coyle. Floats the pass off to Lorenzato, the halfback. Here goes Lorenzato. Punches through one tackle. Aitken, the prop. Plays scrum half after Tola. Coyle. Short pass away to Villani. Down the outside, Villani. 
Sid Bonaventure threatening. Coyle off to Blum. Lorenzato. Coyle back to a play for Otaneru. Coyle. Flat pass to Mendenhall. Beats one, two, three, four. Count them up. Still go. And a penalty to St. Bonaventure. It is certainly foot on the throttle stuff. St. Bonnie's dominating territory and position at the moment, you must say, Craig. And they're going yeah, for the line really out. We mentioned, even though they missed that kick before, the nature of the laws is that the Brown have to kick the ball back. So they are going to get possession. That's exactly what happened. And then they put and played it together and did a really good job to put Brown under pressure. And now that's four penalties in a row for Brown. If I was a St. Bonaventure captain, I'll maybe be having a little word in the ear of referee, but I'm sure Miles McIver, he knows his stuff. He's got it. But a brilliant opportunity, probably the best opportunity they're going to have uh, to put points on the board and retain that pressure from St. Bonaventure. Well, you can almost see the clock winding down. Just over 10 minutes to play in this semi-final both teams the opportunity now to have a bit of a chat and get some water talk about how they're going to attack the most important 10 minutes of their season you can see the coaching staff there for brown arms folded they mean business you see a substitution here for some bonaventure number 18 ryan burrett enters the field Just need to make sure that the clock is stopped. Yeah, absolutely. That's still ticking away. So we'll keep that in mind when we get to 80 minutes that there'll still be a bit of extra time to go. But how good Cy Mendenhall. He's been absolutely brilliant for St. Bonaventure. Number 22, he's been electric and has been a big part of why they've got themselves really close and back into this game. He certainly has been enormous for them so far and another substitution for St Bonnie's number 20 fielding Carlson comes on to play scrum half so fresh legs is the order for St Bonaventure they take the line out down the setup's pretty good it looks to have been collapsed by Brown but legally so says the referee so we play on here goes Coyle Brown straight on the ball have they got the turnover no they haven't Carlson just slowing things down as they keep it tight and look to pit towards the line. Here goes Barrett. The new man on the field gets an early carry in. McGlory. St. Bonaventure just happy to keep things nice and tight at the moment. Here they go. Coyle. Wide pass out to Mendenhall on the right side. And he's just held up. Fantastic scrambling defense there from Brown. I thought it was a try for all money. Cy Mendenhall. But Craig Wilson, desperation at its absolute finest. Absolutely. Fair play to Brown there. We've been talking about their recovery tackling and how they get the ball back just when they need it most. And Cy Mendenhall, he almost stepped too many times. He was over the line. He could have scored. Hey, look, it's much easier to say it from here and down there. But it just shows you how tight this game is. Brilliant attack from St. Bonaventure to come back the other way. And then what a cover tackle there. Brilliant, brilliant rugby all around. Well, we're straight back into it. Lonsignor. Still plenty of time left in this one. Here's Coyle. The big bull runner breaks through one. Coyle. It's taken down by Junior Guffer. Carlson, the new man on the field. It's taken high in contact there. You can see by Estevez, and it looks to have formed a mole. Brown potentially turning this one over. St. Bonaventure piling in, trying to get the ball back in. They do the job. Just a bit guilty of carrying contact high there. Russian Bonaventure. Yeah, 
around the, the hallmark of their defense is getting under they tackled the ball they get under the ball and they try and create the maul because they know if the maul is called from the referee and it's collapsed they can just lie there and they're going to win the ball back so brilliant defense from brown on two occasions there stopping a really promising attacking position for st bonaventure but if you're St. Bonaventure, you've got to be happy. You're still deep in Brown's half. One mistake, one penalty, and that could be the game. So it's all to play for. Well, you can see there's some body is on the ground there and it just shows how brutal this encounter has been. Let's have a look at the replay from what forced the turnover as everyone takes a bit of a breather. Obviously, that was the held-up call there by the referee and... What a telling play that could be. So we see here on the next level rugby replay, Carlson got it off to Coil and it was a lovely pass, wasn't it, Craig Wilson? But look at the desperation. Of a defence from, from the inside will manage to get the ball. And it's the tackle technique, the awareness to get under the player. Because even if he loses yards, it doesn't matter. He just need, needs to make sure the ball does not hit the floor. And credit to Brown, they did exactly that. Great analysis there from the contact coach, Craig Wilson, as Lewis feeds it into the scrum. Look at this dominance. Just moving metres forward, other bears, and they get the penalty advantage. Estevez breaks off. That could be the biggest scrum of the game for the Bears. And they're pumped about it. Look at the Fords receiving the pats on the back. It's a clinic in scrummaging. And Dyer will look to find touch and he does just that around about the 10 metre mark still inside the brown bears half we are entering into that shaky territory now aren't we craig four and a half minutes to go semi-final action it's all on the line two points in it absolutely even if you have the ball you've got to be totally clean with what you do because one penalty will decide this game so brown have got to be really sharp and clear their lines St. bonaventure have got to attack it and get them under pressure Corbett takes it down. The Bears form the mall and they're etching forward. Here it's at the back with Casper Pitbaldo. Just moving forward into the half. This is constructed beautifully by the Bears. Working as a pack. Got to be careful not to concede a penalty here to St. Bonaventure. And Juan Penns come through the back. Monsignor, short play pass. New man on the field for the Bears. Mertzel. Here's Lonsignor dancing through one, two, three, four. Look at him go, Raphael Lonsignor. Lewis finds Dyer. Gets it off to Antonio Estevez. Some Bonaventure coming through and causing absolute havoc and they've forced the turnover. Carlson off to Penn, finds Coyle, cut out pass to Villani, finds Lorenzato. Simple adventure, not going away. Carlson finds Hawthorne. Again in the hands of Coyle. Now with Coyle rather. Flat out pass to Mendenzal, but obstruction is the call. Wow. That's a huge call, and that could be the deciding one too, Craig, almost. Absolutely. I would love to see that one again because St. Bonaventure were on the ascendancy and they got pulled back for obstruction there, which could be a tough call, but uh, the referee was right in the place to see it, and then that stopped the attack, and now it'll be interesting to see what Brown do here. Just take the time off the clock. This is where you've got to use your smarts. Use all the time you possibly can to really make sure that clock keeps ticking down. Well, we'll try to see if we can get the replay of the penalty just moments ago, but don't go away because the ball's still in play and we're underway again with Coyle, who sends it deep down to Lonsignor after the Bears failed to find touch. Lonsignor puts up the banana torpedo. 
who finds Stephens. They find some open pasture. It's in the hands again of Lonsignor who puts it to boot. And the ball stays in play. That's a nice kick there from Lonsignor, forcing Stephens back to collect the ball. And Stephens has to put it in touch. And that, Craig Wilson, is a massive net game for the Brown Bears. That is huge. Yeah, when you needed your turn, Raphael Lonzo the most. What a kick he puts in. And then it's been a hallmark of Brown all day. It's not just a good kick. It's the kick chase. And that is putting pressure on those backfield for St. Bonaventure. And you had no option there. You've just got to clear your lines because you don't want to get turned over that deep into the field. So really good structured rugby there. And their kicking and kick chase has been on point today. Well, it'll be Joel Husso to feed into what could be the last line out of the game. Into referees time almost in the semi-final. Corbett takes it in. And the mall was formed, says the referee. So St. Bonaventure forced to play at it. Lewis gets it off to Lonsignor. Flat pass to Dyer. Looks for the wraparound backdoor, but no one's home. So he takes it into contact himself. And Zeller gets it off to Lonsignor. Flat pass to Junior Guppa. And a penalty to St. Bonaventure. Off feed is the call. Estevez is pleading his case, but they're not going to get much. So St. Bonaventure, potentially their last chance in the game to snatch a victory against all odds. And it stays out of touch, so play on. We're underway again with Brown. Mertzel. But St. Bonaventure somehow get the ball back. Juan Penn. Don't go away, ladies and gentlemen. Carlson. Flat pass. Coyle. Inside to Lorenzato. Here's Otsuku. Carlson. Gets it off to McCann. Brown trying to get in there and force a penalty. Hawthorne. Looks for the offload but can't find Greg Stephens. Carlson, the replacement scrum half, throws the intercept. Dan Archer, Captain Fantastic, swoops it up. And a penalty to Brown. That could be the ball game. The Brown Bears could be on the road to Houston. We will see the referee's time. But that could be all we have time for, ladies and gentlemen. And it looks like they're going to take the shot at goal to try and put this one to bed. And they will indeed. Wow, Craig Wilson, have a breath. Wow, talk about needing your captain most. Dan Archer for Brown, not only been scrummaging like a demon and lifting his lifters, the jumpers in the line out and winning rucks, he got the intercept exactly when they needed it most. And what a play from Dan Archer. That's testament to his leadership, his fitness, his skill level. And that gives a chance for Brown to see this game out. But you never know what might happen. It could bounce off the post. The ball could still be live here. So we've got an exciting finish ahead of us. Wow. Raphael Lonsignor with the opportunity to send Brown on the plane to Houston. Here he goes. Strikes it pretty cleanly. The direction just as good. And that is all we have time for, ladies and gentlemen. The Brown Bears are your champions. Look at the Gatorade bottles go flying. Look at the passion. That's fantastic scenes here at Penn State Burks. And they have punched their name on the ticket to Houston. 11 points to 9. A furious encounter we've witnessed here today. And credit to St. Bonaventure just staying in the fight. And Craig Wilson, we have witnessed one of the great games of collegiate rugby here today. Up. Up. 
Absolutely, and I think the man of the match has got to go to that man, uh, Dan Archer. Brilliant play, just when you needed him most. But a big shout out has to go to Rafael Lancia. He managed that game really, really well and just kept Brown going. And it was just a massive testament to Brown. I think their kick chase was excellent, but also their defense, the cover defense was on point. But a big, big mention goes to St. Bonaventure. They were inches away from taking the lead within the last 10 minutes. And this was just an epic battle, a great showcase for National Collegiate Rugby. And a congratulations to Brown, who moved forward to the big dance. Well, it certainly was a fantastic showcase. As you can see on screen, the road to Houston. Well, Brown, they're well and truly still on the road. St. Bonaventure will keep their heads held high. What a fantastic game from them. You can see everyone shaking hands there. Coach Laflamme, he might need a check-in for I don't know, a bit of a heart rate test. I'm sure it'll be pumping nice and high, but they will go back to Providence, a very happy team. The second Division One semi-final will be coming to you live later on. It will be Queens versus Thomas Moore, and let's have a look at the replays on screen.